and welcome to First Presbyterian Church. Whether you're here to play bells or you're online with us, we hope that you will be especially blessed by this service of worship. I'd like to begin with our announcements this morning. Printed in the bulletin that was emailed to you, you'll see some notification about the continuation of the anti-hunger program, first and third Thursday at Peebles, and second and fourth Thursday at Peebles uh, Plaza. And you can actually call 342-0889 to get the times. Also, we have our daily bread devotionals available. I know that some of them are at the manse. For fellowship next Saturday, this coming Saturday, October the 3rd at 1 o'clock, we are going to do a blessing of the animals. You can bring your pets. I have doggy treats and kitty treats. And you can bring a picture of your pets if they're, like, if they're cats like mine and don't need to be outside. Or if you're a child and you want to bring a stuffed animal. We will bless all the animals. We will have a good time of seeing each other. You must wear a mask. You can bring a lawn chair. Just come and enjoy the fellowship and the blessing that all of our pets are to us. Thanks be to God. Also, next Sunday is World Communion Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays of the year. And I know session is meeting tomorrow night, and it's very likely, because the rules have all changed in the state, that we will be going back to in-person worship, spaced carefully, wearing a mask. Watch for the announcement in my pastoral letter, but I'm pretty sure we will do this because we just miss being together. That's part of being the body of Christ. So watch for that. And worship committee is meeting today following worship. And Westminster Four will practice next week at four at 9.45 before singing for church. Yay. And you're going to enjoy the bells today. I believe that's all the announcements. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God with the beautiful prelude.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Join me in the opening sentences. Come, let us return to the Lord, that he may heal us and bind us up. Let us, let us press, press on to know the Lord. He comes as the showers that water the earth. For the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sin and guilt. For God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Please join me in the prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we begin to be overwhelmed with the political fighting in our nation, help us to remember that yours is the true and lasting kingdom and all our work is for it and you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. before God and with confidence as his precious children confess our sins this day let us pray merciful God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone we have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Now let us take some time to confess our personal prayers in silence. Loving Lord, we pray, create in us a clean heart, renew a right spirit, and Lord, restore to us the joy of your salvation. We make this and all of our prayers spoken and silent. In Jesus' name, amen. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. He reigns in power for us. He even prays for us. My dear friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us respond with joy and praise. I invite you now to hear the word of God as it comes to us in our first New Testament reading from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, 
verses 14 through 15. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The reading ends, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have missed you so much. If we come back to worship next week, I hope that you will come as well. We will have a special bulletin that goes with my sermon that works for ages zero to three, and there's a second one that's different that is for four and up. We will have crayons, and you will be able to stay with your parents and color, and there are games in those bulletins, and you will have a fun time worshiping God with all of us. And we will enjoy having you back because we miss you and love you. Today we're talking about thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come basically is saying to God, your kingdom, your territory, Lord, we want it to come on earth and take over. Things are not always good, especially during a pandemic. We want you, Lord Jesus. We want you here. We want you now. That's always a good thing to pray. We can ask Jesus to come. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to hear the word of God. As it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, once again, you're going to hear the same verse all of these time, verses. This is 6, 9 through 13. Then, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The reading is the 13th verse of the 6th chapter. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O loving Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Thy kingdom come. These words would not have been unfamiliar to the hearers, the listeners, to Jesus' sermon that day and his teaching of what we call the Lord's Prayer. Because every Sabbath in the synagogue, the rabbi, much the way I end our service with a benediction, would end the service with these words, may God establish his kingdom in your lifetime and in your days and in all the ages of the whole house of Israel, soon and in the near future. Establish his kingdom in our lives now. I love that. I love us asking God to come. Whenever I have gone through difficult times in life, pandemics, 
diseases, whatever else is going on, political climates. One of my favorite prayers has always been, in so Lord Jesus, quickly come, and night will be no more. We need no light, nor lamp, nor sun, for Christ shall be our all. That's a beautiful prayer, but it means everything. Because someday Jesus will come. He will establish his kingdom. We wait. Sometimes not patiently, but we wait. Pastor Bill Carl is one of my many favorite preachers. He was at First Church of Dallas for many of the years we were pastoring in the South. When he looks at this particular passage, he divides it into three pieces. The first is thy. And thy is very specific. It is not my kingdom. It is your kingdom, God. We have to be clear about that. Most of our lives, we experience the process of being dethroned. If any of you have seen my Facebook on my sister's birthday in January, I typically post what is one of my earliest memories. I was 15 months old, and in that picture, I am standing there in my little Delphi dress, looking on my mother who is feeding my brand new baby sister. Remember, 15 months old, and the look on my face is dethroned. I had been knocked out of center. I had been taken off that child throne of mine, mine, mine. And suddenly, Colleen had that spot. And it was hard. It hurt, and it hurts every time we are dethroned. I am sure that every father across the world could tell you that when that first baby came home, he was dethroned. No longer was he the center of his wife's attention because that's what it takes to nurse and care for a baby that's brand new. It's not that we don't love our husbands, but they have to come second for a little while till we learn what we're doing. That's normal. We also get dethroned when we realize that we've lost out on something. We've missed an opportunity. We've perhaps made a mistake and it's cost us. But our inclination as human beings is always to feel like it's mine, my kingdom, my life. No one can tell me what to do. But the truth is, it all belongs to God. Frank Sinatra can sing, I did it my way, but God is constantly saying, you will do it his way. That's the first word, and it is a powerful word. Jesus is very clear. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else will fall into place. That's basically what it means. So if our focus is on God, on his kingdom coming. That changes everything. The second word in this phrase is kingdom, and it is a powerful one. Remember how hurt God was when Israel insisted on having king? God does not like to be displaced. He is the one and only king, the true king. Now, as citizens of the United States, we quite naturally bristle when someone says kingdom, because we don't believe in kingdoms. In the 1700s, we fought to get away from a kingdom. Just as an aside, the second hymn we're going to sing is Jesus shall reign where'er the sun, and it's sort of an in-your-face to the statement England made of the sun never sets on English soil because they conquest all over the world. We don't like that way of being. We don't like to be part of a kingdom. In fact, Presbyterians in particular don't like that language. King George, when all of the Revolutionary War stuff was going on, he called the revolution the Presbyterian Rebellion, and there is a very good reason for that. We are the creators of representative form of government. 
We know, thanks to John Calvin, that none of us is without sin. Therefore, no one person should ever be in charge of anything. We are passionate about that as Presbyterians. We know there needs to be checks and balances. We know there always needs to be accountability, whether it's church government or the governments in which we live. We support that because we believe that the only real king is God. There have been times when this world has been lulled into a sense of security where they thought, oh, surely God's kingdom is here, it's come, we don't have any more worries. The last time that was very broadly preached in a way that you can historically document was 1914. Guess what happens after that? World War I. So we can't afford to get complacent. We have to remember that God is in charge and that we want him to be in charge. And everyone else needs to be accountable. There needs to be a way in which people's ideas are checked and balanced in all ways. Okay, after thy and after kingdom, we come to the last word which is come. Thy kingdom come. Now, this is probably the most serious word in the whole phrase because it's what draws us into action. This is a call for us to be very active Christians, to be very much a part of making it possible for the kingdom to be experienced in this world. I get a bit angry when people say to me, well, I'm not going to come to church because I don't believe in a God who lets people suffer who lets 200,000 people die in a pandemic in our country. I just, I can't believe that God. Well, you know what? He's not the one who let it happen. We are. And in any case that we could point to, we're the ones responsible, not him. We're the ones who can make a difference. We're the ones who, in one of my favorite anthems, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. There's no better summary of what it means to come. Thy kingdom come means we have work to do. As a church, as a community, as a nation, as a world, there is so much left for us to do. And there are things that compete. Kings and queens and greed and jealousy and envy, and possessions. But none of those really matter. Only God. Only God and his kingdom coming in our lives, in our homes, our churches, most especially in our hearts each day. But things have to change for that to happen. Tom Long is another famous preacher in our denomination. He tells the story of a little child, and I can still see my son doing this, running up and climbing up into the pulpit and speaking into the sound system that hasn't been turned on yet, off yet. Mommy, mommy, look at me. I can still see Kelly. Mommy, mommy, I'm playing pulpit. But the true message of this phrase, thy kingdom come, is God, we look at you. We wait for you. We live to serve you. Show us how. Amen.
God's word read and proclaimed. Now in faith, let us say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. joys and concerns today. We remember Leslie Rapsey. She had two heart stints inserted. This is someone that Lisa has had, Lisa Holden. Uh, Bob Reed was in the hospital. He's now at home and he needs our prayers. And Gertie Clyde had a fall and she's now back at Wendy Hill, but in the rehab section, and she needs our prayers. We're also praying for Caleb Strauss, the wildfires, Robert Pennington, Trina Shirey, Nancy and Amy Bachman. And there are many others. On our list, I commend it to you. Anyone else here? Yes. Quarantine. Uh, Isaiah and Noah are positive for COVID. I missed that. Yes. Isaiah and Noah tested positive, and Ethan's with them, so they're all quarantined. So pray for our boys. They need our prayers. Pray for everyone who is testing positive right now. Let us go before God and present our prayers. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving Father, these are times 
that truly stretch each and every one of us. It draws forth our faith and confronts us face to face with our complete dependence upon you. O oh Lord, call forth from us the best that is in us, all that is you in us. There are so many people in need right now. Our nation is so divided. Lord, please heal, bring peace, bring wisdom. For the pandemic and the families that have lost loved ones, 204,000 families that have been touched by this horrible disease, please, Lord, give them your comfort and your assurance. And Lord, continue to help the mitigation processes in all the states. Continue to help individuals take this seriously so we can put an end to this disease. Continue to work with those that are finalizing plans for vaccines. And when one emerges, may it be safe and may it be able to be duplicated so that it can be spread worldwide. In the meantime, Lord, we have so many needs in our own church family, in our community and area, so many people that have COVID, so many people that are battling the usual things we have battled, cancer and heart disease. Lord, we lift them up to you. We ask for your great physician's healing touch for all that are on our list, all that are in our hearts this day. Oh Lord, we do long to have your rule in our hearts, our homes, our nation. Lord, we ask that you would continue to intervene for your good and for all that you would have as your will in this world. Continue to use us as a church, point us to the ways in which we can care for one another, but also reach beyond these walls and care for those who are hurting in our own community, who are hungry, who are in need. Please, Lord, put them in our paths so that we can love them as you call us to. And now, O oh Lord, we ask that you would hear us as we pray the way you taught us, truly meaning the words we speak. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. and most especially ourselves. We won't be passing any plates even next week if we're able to meet again in person. We'll have plates at each of the doors. In the meantime, you've done such an incredible job of putting your gifts in the mail slot of the manse office door, putting them in the actual mail, dropping them by on Sunday morning during the service. We thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ in and from this place. Let us pray now to dedicate these gifts. Gracious and loving Father, we bring before you things that have passed first through your hands into ours. You bless us in so many ways that we might be blessings, that we might be living reminders of you in this community and beyond. Use these gifts for your glory and that your love and your kingdom may be established. In Jesus' name, amen.
God's people. We are loved and forgiven. Let us go into the world this week making everything we do be about God's kingdom come. Now, here, everywhere, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, may God's blessing dwell in our hearts now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.